Some of you asked me to explain how this stuff was um, designed and created. So here's the bottle brush, and the critical part is you have to measure across where that blue band is. It's a little easier with a caliper than a ruler. So you take those measurements and you make a 2D drawing. You see here it's just flat. And then you take all the parts of your drawing one by one and you create 3D shapes with them. The first one will be the hole where the bottle brush goes through. And we'll make that taller than the whole part is going to be. You'll see why. So next I'll extrude the uh, outside of the collar that holds the bottle brush and make that the height that I want the whole part to be. Now I'll unhide the first part and um, punch that out of the bigger part so it creates a hole. So now we can hide that and work on the two mounting pieces that go off to the right. And so you could do this a different way. You could you could make a compound shape like this and then extrude that compound shape and it already has the hole in it. That's pretty slick. Now, you know, I want this thing to be um, run, water run off it. So I want to round the edges off. That's called fillet in 3D World. And the fillet tool here, you, you select the edge and then you push and pull until you get it just like you want. You can also put in the numbers here and it, it's not shown on screen, but and we'll go around, go select the other edge right there and just fill it that the same exact way. And you can you just punch in the same numbers. So now let's say we have that part done. And, you know, I spent some more time on it with the final thing. But let's say that's done and you want the other one over there on the right. You copy and paste that and then you take the copy and rotate it and it gives you it kind of snaps to 45 and 90 degrees and then you can slide it over and using those little arrows uh, until you get it right in place where your where your drawing is right there So now we have to cut the slot out of the collar where the brush is going to slide in. So we can make that, extrude that a little taller than the rest of the part because it, it's better that it's taller and not shorter because it won't punch out the whole, that whole part of the collar. So now we can use the same cut tool where you select the out the part and then you select the what you want to punch out of it and then you it punches out of it. So now one one last thing is those front edges are real sharp. I want it to be so that when you approach it with the bottle brush it just kind of slides in there. So we'll round off those front edges with the fillet tool. And then there's one and then swivel around and do the other one and it could be the same number exactly you know it'll just be exactly the same on both sides so there so there's the part now we save it as an STL file and bring that STL file into this program Repetier which is the printing 3D printing program so once the part goes in there, um, then you tell the program to slice it into little layers. 
you can see here it's processing that and I'm doing this in real time to get so you can see how fast that is it's you know less than 30 seconds that it figures out every single layer and where the printing head is going to go in a path now here's the 3d printer and the first thing you do is coat the bed of it with this uh, painter's tape to keep the print from sticking to the printer and then you load in this uh, filament it comes in different colors it's made out of uh, bioplastic corn it goes down into this little feeder and then that feeds down into a heater that's what melts it and it acts like a glue gun that's controlled by a computer. So we're going to start running the job now. First thing it's going to do is use that yellow proximity sensor on the right and it's going to measure the height of three points of the uh, print bed and create a custom plane that if the print bed is a little bit out of uh, level that it'll print down onto that unlevel plane perfectly and it'll build the whole part right off that. So now the um, inside of the, the heater is showing almost 200 degrees. You can see how the filament is being melted and extruded out of the tip but it's not quite hot enough. When it gets to that 205, then it'll say, okay, it's hot enough, we can start right there. So now, it's making uh, a run around about a half an inch outside of where the part is gonna be. And it's, and it's getting it so that it's laying down a nice bead of that plastic. Before it tries to start printing the bottom layer of this part, that's pretty smart because uh, if you started before then, it really wouldn't stick. So now it jumps over right in midstream and starts printing the part. And what it's doing here is it's printing kind of a. a a jagged layer back and forth like a zigzag pattern and that gives it a lot of surface area to stick to the bottom the bed of the printer and that's real important with the 3d printer so now it's going to do the other inside of the, uh, the bracket on the other side And this, this first layer takes a lot longer because it's making a back and forth zigzag pattern, getting, getting all that plastic down onto the bed. You can hear a kind of sing-songy pattern to the motors that move this thing around as they go one way and the other and as they go around the curve and go up and down and pitch and it's just a wonderful thing to listen to. So now you're seeing a couple of layers uh, later, it's making a wall around the object and then it starts weaving a very thin inside, which is kind of like a spider web or a nest or a 
cocoon. And the computer figures out how to do that. It makes the part very light and very strong. It doesn't use a lot of material. So then it weaves this texture inside the walls and alternates between the texture in the wall and the texture in the wall. Finally, when it gets within three layers of the top, it starts making a wall all along the top and a, a very smooth um, layer. And it and it gives it that nice fillet top corners on on all those parts. when it's finished it just slides off to the side and now it's time to try to get it off the bed they have a little uh, spatula for this but I'm going to just yank it off because it's a stout part and looks like it did pretty well <laughs> 